Hello everyone, welcome back. In this presentation, we are going to find the GCD, the greatest common divisor using Euclidean algorithm. To find the GCD of two numbers, I am going to explain you two different ways of finding the GCD. In this presentation, we are going to focus on method 1. In the next presentation, we will focus on method 2. Why waiting? Welcome to method 1 of finding the greatest common divisor using Euclidean algorithm. Let's dive into the outcomes first. Upon the completion of this session, the learner will be able to. We have only one outcome, which is we are going to understand the Euclid's algorithm to find the greatest common divisor of two numbers. So it's very clear that we are going to focus on Euclid's algorithm, which is also called as Euclidean algorithm. Why we are focusing on this algorithm? This algorithm is for computing the greatest common divisor, simply GCD. This greatest common divisor is also known as the highest common factor, HCF. So whatsoever, the concept is the same. Whether you refer it with the name GCD or HCF, we are going to find the biggest number, the biggest divisor, that to the common divisor. If things are not clear, no worries. Let's understand the operation of GCD first. So we are in example 1 for understanding the GCD, the greatest common divisor. As I already mentioned, we are going to find the GCD of two different numbers, right? So and that's why I've taken two different columns. Firstly, I'm going to take two different numbers, right? Let's say the first number is 12 and the second number is 33. Now I'm going to find the GCD of 12 and 33. How to find this? I'm going to find the divisors first. Then I'm going to find the common divisors and then I'm going to find out the greatest common divisor. So this is so simple, you know. Let's first focus on the number 12. What are the divisors of number 12? Divisors of 12 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6 and 12. When 12 is divided by these numbers, we will get the remainder as 0. And that's why we call these numbers as divisors. So 12 has 6 divisors, right? And what are all the divisors for the number 13? Number 13 has the divisors 1, 3, 11 and 33. So when 33 is divided by these numbers, we will be getting the remainder 0. So simply, these 6 numbers are the divisors of 12 and these 4 numbers are the divisors of 13. So we have completed finding the divisors. Let's now focus on the common divisors. Now in these set of divisors, what are all the common divisors? Here we have 1, here also we have 1. Here we have 3, here also we have 3. Is there any other common numbers there? No. We have the common divisors as what? 1 and 3. Now we are going to focus on the greatest common divisor. So there are two numbers, 1 and 3, which is the biggest number? Which is the greatest number? 3, right? So the greatest common divisor is 3. I hope now you can understand what is GCD. So the GCD of two numbers 12 and 33 is 3. So 3 is the greatest common divisor or HCF, the highest common factor of 12 and 33. We are done with example number 1. Let's now dive into example number 2. In example number 2, we are going to take two different numbers. Let's say 25 and 150. Firstly, we are going to find the divisors. What are all the divisors for 25? The divisors of 25 are 1, 5 and 25, right? And what about the divisors of 150? There are multiple divisors. So the divisors of 150 are 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 10, 15, 25, 30, 50, 75 and 150. So when this number 150 is divided by these many numbers, we will be getting the remainder as 0. Now we have completed finding out the divisors of both the numbers. Let's now move on to this part which is finding the common divisor. What are all the common divisors here? We have 1, 5 and 25. Here also we have 1, 5 and 25, right? So the common divisors are 1, 5 and 25. So we have the common divisors 1, 5 and 25, which is the greatest common divisors in these three numbers, obviously 25. So 25 is the greatest common divisor. So the answer for GCD of 25 comma 150 is 25. I hope things are clear. So far we have seen the examples which involves composite numbers. So in the previous example as well as in example 2, we have taken numbers where these numbers are composite numbers, right? Let's see one more example which involves prime numbers. And let's see what is the greatest common divisors when we have prime numbers. Let's move on to example number 3. 
In this example, we are going to take prime numbers. So, let's take the first number as 13 and the second number as 31. Firstly, let's see the divisors of 13. The divisors of 13 are 1 and 13 and the divisors of 31 are 1 and 31. And we know very well that prime numbers will have only two factors. One is number 1 and the other one is the number itself, right? So, obviously, what will be the common divisor in these two? It is 1, right? So, the common divisor, we have only 1 and obviously, this is going to be the greatest common divisor. So, it's clear that when you are going to perform the GCD of two different prime numbers, then the greatest common divisor is 1. So, the answer for this question is 1. GCD will be 1 only for two different prime numbers. So far, we have understood the basics of GCD. So, I have given three examples just to have a strong fundamentals and the better understanding about GCD. But, if the numbers are big, then it's very difficult to find out the factors for all the numbers and then finding the common divisor and then finding the greatest common divisor, right? So, Euclidean algorithm or Euclid's algorithm does the job in an easy manner for us. Let's see how to find the GCD of two numbers using Euclidean algorithm. So, let's move on to the question. Find the GCD of 12, 33. If you note here, these two are not prime numbers, right? If these two numbers are prime numbers and these two are different numbers, then we can easily say the GCD is 1. But in this case, these two numbers are not prime numbers. So, in this case, we are going to use Euclidean's algorithm or Euclid's algorithm for finding the greatest common divisor. So, we are in method 1. So, what we are going to do is just create four columns like this. The first one is the quotient. The second one is two parameters A and B because we are going to compute the GCD of two different numbers, right? So, 12 and 33, we have two numbers here. So, we are going to take A and B as two variables here. And obviously, we are going to do the division. Division has two outputs, right? One is the quotient and the other one is the remainder. So, the first one is the quotient and the second one, this R is the remainder. So, just take four parameters like this in four columns, quotient, A, B and remainder. Now, we are going to take these two numbers, 12 and 33. Which is the biggest number in these two numbers? This is 33, right? Always use the biggest number in A and the next number in B. In this example, we have 33 as the biggest number. So, A is 33 and B is 12. So, let's do that now. So, I am taking the biggest number 33 in A and the smallest number 12 in B. Now, do the division operation and whenever you find this B becomes 0, then whatever is there in A, that is the GCD. I repeat, do the division operation. Whenever you find the B parameter with 0 as the value, then whatever is there in A, that's the GCD. No worries, things will be clear when we see this example. So, let's do the division operation. We know A is here, we know B is here, right? Do A mod B. A mod B, you know what you are going to do. You are going to divide A mod B, right? You are going to do the operation A mod B. This is A divided by B, right? So, 33 mod 12. So, when you divide 33 by 12, 12, 2 times 24 and the remainder is 9. We have the quotient as 2 and we have the remainder as 9. So, we are going to use this quotient here. We are going to use this remainder here. So, it's clear that the quotient is 2 and the remainder is 9. So, first row is over. Are we getting B as 0 here? No, we have to repeat the operation. Just see here, let this B go to this place, that is B is A now and the remainder is B now. I repeat, B is A now and the remainder is B now. Just shift the values. So, when you shift the values, 12 will be in A and the remainder 9 will be in B. Now, carry out the same division operation, 12 divided by 9, 9 1 times 9 and the remainder is 3. So, this 1 is the quotient and 3 is the remainder. So, we know what we will get here and here, right? So, 1 is the quotient and 3 is the remainder. Are we getting B as 0 here? No. So, we are going to repeat the operation. So, 9 is going to be placed here and 3 is going to be placed here. See what is happening? 9 is going to be placed here and 3 is going to be placed here. So, 9 and 3 are taking the places of A and B respectively. Now, do the division operation. 9, when it is divided by 3, 3 times 9 and the remainder is 0. So, 3 is the quotient and 0 is the remainder. So, we get the quotient as 3 and the remainder as 0. Are we going to stop up to this? No. I told you, whenever your B value is 0, then A is the GCD. Is the B value 0 here? No, it is still 3, right? 
So do the shifting operation one more time. So 3 is going to take this place and 0 is going to take this place. So we get A as 3 and B as 0. Right? Now perform the same division operation. So we are going to divide 3 by 0. So divide by 0, can it be performed? No, mathematically it's not valid, right? So numbers cannot be divided by 0. So obviously we cannot get the quotient and the remainder, right? Now see we have the number 0 in B. I told you whenever there is a number 0 in B, then whatever is there in A is the GCD. So what is there in A? It is 3, right? So the GCD of 12, 33 is 3. So the answer for GCD of 12, 33 is 3. It means 3 is the biggest number that can divide both 12 and 33, right? So 3 can divide 12 4 times. 3 can divide 33 11 times. So 3 is the biggest number that can divide both 12 and 33. I hope things are clear for you now. Let's see one more example. So we are going to find the GCD of 750 and 900. Let's see that now. So we are going to take four columns as I mentioned, the quotient A, B and the remainder. And we also know that A means the biggest of these two numbers will be placed in A, right? What is the biggest number in these two numbers? It's 900 is placed in A and B takes the value as 750. Now we are going to do the regular division operation. So 900 mod 750, we get 1 as the quotient and 150 as the remainder. So 1 is the quotient and 150 as the remainder. B is not 0. So what we are going to do, we are going to shift. So B is going to be placed here and the remainder is going to be placed here. So 750 is taking this place, that is A's place and 150 is taking B's place. Now do the regular division operation, 750 mod 150, we get 5 as the quotient and 0 as the remainder. Now we have filled those values here, still B is not 0, so we are going to repeat the algorithm. So 150 is going to take this place and the remainder 0 is going to take this place. So we get 150 in A and 0 in B. Now we are going to do the regular division. So we cannot proceed further. So it's clear that this algorithm is going to stop up to this and obviously there will be no quotient and no remainder. So when the parameter B is 0, whatever is there in A, that's the GCD. So the greatest common divisor of 750 comma 900 is 150. In other words, 150 is the biggest number that can divide both 750 and 900. Before we sign out, let's see the third example. In this example, we are going to find the GCD of 252,105. So we know things are very clear. We are going to have four columns, quotient, A, B and the remainder. So A is taking the biggest value and B is taking the next value. So 252 is placed in A and 105 in B. We are going to do the regular division. So the quotient and the remainder are placed appropriately. B is not zero, so we are going to do the shifting operation. So 105 is taking A's place and 42 is taking B's place. So we are going to do the regular division operation. So 42 2 times is 84 and the remainder is 21. So quotient is 2 and the remainder is 21. Still B is not 0. So we are going to do the regular shifting operation. So we are going to shift 42 to A and 21 to B. So 42 divided by 21, the remainder is 0 and the quotient is 2. We are placing the quotient and the remainder in the appropriate places. Now is the B value 0? No. So still we are going to run the algorithm. So 21 is moved to A and 0 is moved to B. Now 21 mod 0. We are going to perform. Obviously we cannot proceed further. There is no quotient and there is no remainder. So we have encountered a situation where B becomes 0 and whatever is there in A when B is 0, that's the GCD, right? So the GCD of 252,105 is 21. Before we sign out, let's see the homework question. The homework question for you is find the GCD of 105,105. I request you to solve this problem and post your answers in the comment section. I hope now you understood the working of Euclid's algorithm or Euclidean algorithm to find the GCD or HCF of two numbers. I'll meet you in the next presentation and thank you for watching.